If you haven't noticed, Disney Speedstorm has been getting a lot of attention lately. All of these articles are pretty much writing about the same thing. They are writing about Gameloft's new decision to make the season pass only purchasable by spending money instead of using their in-game currency. Now, a lot of players, and I mean a lot of players, think this is a great thing. They think this is something that will help Gameloft change their mind and, and do the rights of the wrongs. However, all this attention may not actually be a bad thing. In this video, we're gonna crack that mystery. We're gonna see is this actually a good thing that they are getting all of this attention, even if it is for something that is a negative thing? Now, before we crack this mystery, let's start from the beginning. Let's start from Early Access. When Early Access launched last year, no one really knew about it. You only found out about Disney Speedstorm if someone told you or if you just got lucky and stumbled across it. In order to participate in Early Access, you had to buy one of the three Founders Packs. These Founder Packs that were in Early Access a year ago actually had a pay to win mechanic in place already. The more you spent, the more you got, and you can purchase multiple Founders Packs. This means you can stack Founders Bundles repeatedly and get more out of them. This would give you a huge advantage over others. Now this is important because this means that from the start, they already knew this was supposed to be one of those games where if you paid more money, you would then be better, you would win more. That is the style of mobile games anyway, and Gameloft is a mobile company, so it really kind of makes sense. Now, I myself was someone who's bought the Founders Pack, but I only bought it once. But I know multiple players who purchased the higher tiers and bought multiple Founders Packs. Now, I brought that up for a good reason. Remember, you can only participate in early access if you paid for the game. Disney Speedstorm is a kart racer, just like Nickelodeon kart racer, Garfield kart racer, you know, it was in that same genre. This is one of the reasons why many people didn't even buy the game. They already thought that it was going to be something like that. However, Disney Speedstorm did offer something unique into its own, which is why players still gave it a chance. Now we don't have the numbers for Xbox, PlayStation, Epic Games, and all of that good stuff, but we do have the numbers for Steam. And Steam shows a massive decline in numbers relatively quickly. Now one of the main arguments for decrease in player count is the fact that, well, it's for console players. Only console players play this, that's why there's a decrease on computers. That's incorrect. There is a shelf life for every single game, and no matter which game it is, players are gonna leave the game and go somewhere else. The thing is with Disney Speedstorm, it happened way too quickly. Now there's two reasons on why this happened so quickly. The first reason, the game was just boring to people. Makes sense, it happens. The second reason is they figured out that it was a pay to win game from the get go and they didn't wanna be a part of it. Even in Disney Speedstorm's article of last year in early access, they wrote that they planned on making progression through the shop. That was already in the plans, that was already in the patch notes. This game was planning to be a pay to win game or a pay to play game from jump. I also want to add, they plan to only allow players to play Disney Speedstorm if they purchase a subscription. And if you were an Xbox player, you weren't playing Disney Speedstorm without Xbox Live, period. So not only was the game pay to win back in early access, but they actually had a plan to make it so that you can only play the game on console if you purchase Nintendo subscription, PlayStation subscription, or Xbox Live. To almost all the early access players, we've seen this as a console game only. However, they released a campaign saying that Disney Speedstorm is now coming to mobile and sign up if you wanna play. Now, there is no doubt in my mind that Disney Speedstorm was supposed to come to mobile. However, I do feel like the mobile version of Disney Speedstorm was supposed to be a spinoff. It was not supposed to be the same as this game. Now, of course, I could be wrong about that, but it would just make sense. Controller players are always gonna beat mobile players, and so there's no real reason to have them on the same platform and just lose. So I would assume they were supposed to be separate. However, that's something that I don't know, but it just makes sense to me. Also, the push for mobile makes sense, not only because Gameloft is a mobile game company, but because they lost a lot of its players in early access. This is a very good way to last ditch effort to gain more players, especially for a game that was designed to be more pay to win even during early access when it first dropped. Now, along with the mobile campaign, Disney Speedstorm had people that were sponsored to play their game. One of the main issues with this is that the sponsors cost money, and most likely that money came from people who were paying in early access. Instead of putting the money to the game to make the game better for everyone, they decided to put the money towards getting more people to play the game, which honestly isn't inherently bad. However, the way that they did it 
was. Now, I'm not going to name any names of the sponsors. If you were there, you were there. But I will say the people that they sponsored don't play Disney games. They don't play kart racers. So really, the people that were playing the game would only play one time, never play the game again. And the people that were watching them weren't even interested in playing Disney Speedstorm anyway. This means a lot of that money really just kind of went down the drain. You can also see this on the Steam numbers. Now, again, we don't have the numbers for PlayStation and Xbox, but we do have these Steam numbers that goes to show there wasn't really a massive increase for people to play the game. A lot of the people they sponsored also plays computer games. Therefore, their audience obviously plays computer games. So the fact that we didn't get any increase in players means that it really didn't help doing much at all. On the day of free to play, we did get a jump in players, but the same thing happened again in early access. All these players left instantly. They left really before the season even ended. They seen the game for what it was. They either said the game was boring, which again happens, or they said it's too pay to win. You don't have anything unlocked. And they already knew from the get go that it wasn't really a good game that they would want to play. Now, after the launch of Disney Speedstorm and the seasons that followed season five, six, and then we're coming on season seven, we noticed a lot of changes in the monetization system. Now, we already know that they plan to do this anyway. Not only is it a mobile game company and they plan to put the mobile game with the console players and the PC players. So obviously they're going to have to have that monetization. That's how mobile games survive. But also the fact that we noticed changes in the shop we noticed changes in events we noticed that things started to get walled off way more than they were in early access again keep in mind the founders pack gave us free stuff so it could seem like the game was more balanced it could seem like we could do everything but if we purchased the founders pack and they gave us free stuff to complete things we can say if there was no payment for the Founders Pack, we would be in the same situation that people in free to play were in. Players like myself that already purchased the Founders Pack had a leg up over everybody from season four, five, six, and leading into seven. We had a lot more characters unlocked. We had a lot more materials. And so you were always behind the players that started earlier but behind because you didn't spend any money yet. Again, this is what they had in early access. You were behind anyone who spent more than you. This is nothing new. They already had this plan to go even before free to play launched. After the launch of free to play in a few seasons after, Disney Speedstorm started to lose popularity on their own website. Disney Speedstorm is toward the bottom of all their other games. This also means that players are not playing Disney Speedstorm anymore. Remember when I said pay attention to the numbers in early access and the numbers in free to play? The reason why I said that is because this is a Disney game. Anyone who is a hardcore Disney lover will play this game. The numbers are pretty much similar. This means the players that played in early access are pretty much the players that are playing now. This means that most of the population of the game are people who have already spent money on the game. This means that if you've already spent money on the game or if you're in too deep, you're probably not gonna stop playing. This means, I'm, no, I'm keeping this going. This means that if you've already spent money and if you are already so deep into the game or you're just a hardcore Disney lover, it doesn't matter what happens to the game, you're gonna love it anyway. This means that any decision that they make, they know that the same players are going to continue to play the game anyway. Now you might be asking, why do I say that? Why do I bring that up? Because that season pass change was not the first change that they've done that was horrible. This is just the one that got the most attention. They always made horrible choices. However, the players that play Disney Speedstorm always get new characters. Then this means that, okay, horrible choices, I don't care, new characters, ah, and they leave the issue away. That is the reason why this is not really a bad thing. Gameloft knows if you're addicted to the game, if you love Disney Speedstorm, if you love Disney characters, you're gonna play anyway. Why does it matter? But thank you IGN, thank you everybody who made articles on our game because not only is Disney Speedstorm going in the direction of all the other games that Gameloft has, but Gameloft is getting called things that they already been called for their other games. This is nothing new. The information is nothing new. The hate for Gameloft is nothing new. All this is, is saying that you're writing articles about things that are bad. However, we know that the audience that plays Disney Speedstorm doesn't care. They're gonna forget about this when their new characters drop. They're gonna forget about this and they're gonna pay and they're gonna continue to play and they're gonna make more excuses on why Disney Speedstorm is such a great game and why you should play it. They can even release something that's a hundred dollars. And I promise you, players will say that's a lot and they'll complain for a while, but, but, 
if they are true Speedstorm fans, if they are true Disney fans, if they are addicted to Disney Speedstorm, they're gonna make an excuse in their minds that says it's okay. This hundred dollars is worth it. That's how it happens every single time, and that's how it happened in early access. Players think that Gameloft is in their office and their office is burning and everybody's upset and the community managers are like, oh my gosh, please don't hate our game. Bro, Gameloft is sitting there chilling like you guys are feeding into exactly what we want. We want people to make articles and we want you to make it seem like this is blown way out of proportion when this is the plan that we had in the first place. On top of that, when we make another pit stop and fix something or give you something that you want, you're gonna forget about this issue and we have more players focused on our game because of what you guys did. Thanks a lot. Remember, Gameloft is smart, they're not dumb. So again, I ask, is this intentional? Is this something that they wanted to do in the first place? Not only in early access, this was the plan. Not only in free to play, this was the plan. Not only did they have a bad time marketing the game, not only did they lose tons of players and tons of money, but the same players continue to play regardless of what choices are made. Was this on accident or was this on purpose? Does Gameloft care? Or are they like, yeah, that's exactly what we planned for. We'll see you next season, buddy. What do you guys think? Until next time, you know what I always say. Thank you guys for doing what? Popping often. We'll off this.